In this lecture, we are going to learn about another very important array method in JavaScript, which is for each. The for each method, it is used to loop over each element of an array. And it allows you to execute a provided function for each element in the array. So the for each method, it takes a source array on which it works. And to the for each method, we need to pass a callback function. And that callback function gets executed for each element of the array. And the very important point to remember here is the return type of for each method is void. So unlike map and filter method, the for each method does not return us a new array. Or unlike reduce method, it does not return us a single value. In fact, the for each method does not return anything. It simply loops over the elements of an array and for each iteration if you want to execute some code you can do that using for each method let's try to understand for each method with an example so here we have this numbers array now let's say what we want is we want to loop over each element of this numbers array and for each iteration we simply want to print some message for that we can use for each method so on the numbers array we can call for each like this and to this for each method we need to pass a callback function this callback function gets executed for each element of this numbers array so this for each method it is going to loop over each element of this numbers array and for each iteration it is going to execute this callback function now this callback function it is going to receive three optional parameters the first parameter will be the current element on which the for each method is looping over the second parameter will be the index of the current element and the third parameter will be the original array on which the for each method is looping over. So here, for example, for the first iteration, this EL will be assigned with seven, which is the first element. This index will be assigned with the index of the first element. So the index of this first element will be zero. So that for the first iteration, this index will be zero. And this ARR, it will be assigned with the original array. In this case, this numbers array. Then for the second iteration, this ELL will be assigned with the value 2 because that is the second element. This index will be assigned with the index of the second element. In this case, the index of the second element will be 1. So 1 will be assigned to this index. And this ARR, it will be assigned with the original array. And for the third iteration, this EL will be assigned with the third element. In this case, this value 10. This index will be assigned with the index of the third element. In this case, the index of this third element will be 2. So this index will be assigned with the value 2 and this ARR will be assigned with the original array on which the for each method is looping over. And that is true for all other elements. So inside this, if I try to log the EL, the index and the ARR, if you save the changes, you will see that for each iteration, it is logging the current element. So for the first iteration, the element value is 7 its index is 0 and for this ARR it is logging the original array on which the for each method is looping over for the second iteration this element is 2 so the second element here is 2 its index is 1 and for the ARR it is logging the original array for the third iteration the value of EL will be 10 so that has been logged here its index will be 2 because it is at third position so any element which is at third position, its index will be 2. So you can see that 2 logged here. And it is also logging the original array. And that is true for all other elements. Now, remember that you can name these parameters anything. So for example, instead of index, I can call this second parameter as i. Okay, in that case here, I will have to use i. And I can call this third parameter anything, maybe a. So in that case, here also I can use A. And you can also name this first parameter anything. For example, currently we are calling it as EL. But if I want, I can also call it as ELEM. Okay, so the name of these parameters can be anything. But the order in which we specify them, that is important. Because if I name it as ARR, it does not matter. This ARR, since it is the first argument, it is going to receive the current element on which the for each method is looping over. The second argument here, it is always going to receive the index of the current element. And the third argument here, it is always going to receive the source array on which the for each method is looping over. 
so the order is important here not the names i hope you got the point so let me call this first argument as el all right now let's see what we want is for each iteration we want to log a message in the console saying that current element value and then we want to log the value of the current element and the value of the current element we will have inside this el parameter so i can say el if i save the changes you will see that for each iteration it is logging this message current element value and then the value of the current element for the first iteration the value of the current element is 7 for the first iteration the value of the first element is 7 so that has been logged here for the second iteration the value of the second element 2 so the message is current element value is 2 for the third iteration the element value is 10 so for the third iteration you will see it logs this message current element value is 10 and that is true for all other elements so this for each method it is used to loop over each element of the source array and for each iteration you can execute some logic for each element in this case we are simply logging some message for each element when we are looping over this numbers array using this for each method but you can also write some complex logic okay and remember that this for each method does not return us anything its return type is void if you see the return type of this for each method is void it is not going to return us any value and if we try to assign it to a variable let me call it as x since this for each method is not returning anything its return type is void if we try to log x here it will log undefined as you can see so this for each method does not return anything its return type is void now using this for each method we can achieve everything which we can achieve with map filter and reduce let me show you that with an example so first of all let me remove this from here and now let's say that using this for each method what we want is we want to loop over this numbers array and for each element of this numbers array we want to calculate its square and we want to assign it to a new array now since this for each method does not return anything first we will have to create a new array i'll call it as squared and initially that will be an empty array now inside this what we are going to do is we are going to write the logic so we are going to square each element of the numbers array for that we can simply say el multiplied by el and let's go ahead and let's store it in a variable let me call it as sqr okay and then what we are going to do we are going to add this sqr to this squared array so for that we can say square dot push and i am going to add this sqr and once the loop will complete this squared array it will have one two three four five six elements because this for each method it is going to loop over this numbers array for each element so it will loop six times and for each iteration it is going to calculate the square of each element and it is going to add that square to the squared array so this squared array will have six elements and those elements will be basically the square of each element in this numbers array so if i save the changes now when we are logging the squared array you will see that this squared array is logging the square of each element from the numbers array so for 7 the square will be 49 that is the first element for 2 the square will be 4 that is the second element for 10 the square will be 100 that is the third element for 4 the square will be 16 that is the fourth element and so on so as you can see using the for each method we can also transform the data just like how we can do it with map method we can also use for each method to filter data so for example let's again call this for each method on the numbers array there let's pass a callback function and this callback function is going to receive each element from the numbers array for each iteration i'm simply going to call it as el and since we are not going to use the index and the original array i'm not using those arguments here we only want to use this el so i'm only specifying that but in your callback function body if you want to use index or the original array then you will have to specify that but since i'm not going to use that i'm simply specifying the first parameter which is going to receive the current element when this for each method will loop over this numbers array 
And what do we want to check here? Let's say we want to check if EL is divisible by 2. So basically, we want to filter all the even numbers from this numbers array. And here I'm using arrow function syntax. And what we are going to do is we are going to wrap it within the body like this because we also need to write few more things. I mean, few more logic for filtering the even numbers. Okay, so let me create another array here. Let's call it even numbers. And initially it is going to be an empty array. And now inside this callback function, we are going to check if the element, the current element on which the for each method is looping over, if it is divisible by two, then add that number to this even numbers array. So here I can say even numbers dot push and push the element, the current element. And let's also go ahead and let's log the even numbers array. If I save the changes, you will see that now when we are logging the even numbers array, it only contains the even numbers from this numbers array. So using this for each method, we are also able to filter the elements. Now you might say if we can transform data like map method using for each and if we can filter data like filter method using for each, then why do we have map and filter method in the first place? Well, if you see when we use map method or filter method there, we do not need to create an empty array explicitly. And also we do not need to push elements to that array explicitly. All that will be taken care by the map method. And in case of filter method, we do not need to explicitly check the condition. We just write the condition and whichever element satisfies that condition, it automatically gets pushed to the new array. So the syntax with map and filter, it is simple and we have to write less code. We can achieve the same thing with for each method also, but in that case, we will have to write a little bit of more code. And that's why we have map and filter method in the first place. We can achieve the same thing with for each method also. Now, the next question which will come to your mind is when you should use map filter method for transforming data or filtering data and when you should use for each method. Well, you should use for each method whenever you want to execute some logic for each element of an array. And that logic can be anything. It might be like you want to sort the data for each element of the array or you want to calculate the discounted price for each product or anything. But whenever you want to create a new array by transforming each element of a source array, then you can use map method. And whenever you want to filter elements from a source array based on a given condition, you can use filter method. Apart from that, if you want to perform any other complex logic on each element of the array, you can use for each method. So for each method, it is used to loop over each element of a source array. And for each iteration, it executes a callback function, which we pass to the for each method as its argument. This for each method, it works on an array. It takes a callback function as an argument. The code within the callback function is executed for each element of the array on which the for each method is looping over. And it allows you to perform operations on each element as required. And the return type of for each is void. It does not return any value. So I hope now you understand what is for each method and what do we use it for. If you have any questions from this lecture, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.